What's up, you guys? All right, well, hopefully yesterday you watched my recap. Um, that recap was one of the best ones that I've done in a long time, and I felt really recharged after it, um, or as some might say, recharged. And so today, um, I knew that I had some risk with this whole, whole jury duty thing, and I was like, you know, I was feeling FOMO because I was like, I really don't, I never like taking days off. I don't like taking days off to go do something fun because I'll feel like if I do something fun, then I'm missing trading and it's, I'm supposed to be trading. So that's what the weekends are for. Uh, of course, jury duty was on Friday. It got canceled. So I was like, all right, jury duty was canceled. That means I meant to come in and trade. And I had my, um, my notes here from yesterday's recap. Um, where I was sort of writing about kind of some of the things that um, I was noticing in the big losses that I had had during the last four cold streaks. So in the last four cold streaks, the first one that I analyzed was March of last year, then June of last year, then October into November of last year, and then this one that I've been on here from February to March. And I looked at a lot of the individual trades, where I got in, um, the big losers, what I was doing right, what I was doing wrong. And there was a lot of FOMO. There was a lot of rule breaking, a lot of swinging for home runs, a lot of emotional trades, not following stops, a lot of chasing entries. And so today I said, clearly in the last few days I've been over trading. I've been taking way too many trades. So I'm gonna trade less. If I can take, and I actually told myself, I was like, what if you try just taking one trade? Just tell, just only take one trade. And I was like, well, I don't know if I should just do one trade. Cause if I do one trade and it's a loser, even if it's a small one, like 50 bucks, then, you know, seventh consecutive red day. And I might also feel like, oh, well, I'm, I only said I'd take one trade. So it either, if it's not working, I might get more stubborn and hold on to it thinking that I can't take a second. So I was like, don't do that. Just let's just, not take too many trades today, just trade less. Uh, so I took a total of three trades and I had three winners and I'm up $1,700. And each of these three trades were really uh, good quality pullback setups. Now the first trade, I got in a, a little early. I, I got in at the right spot, it just didn't break right away. It dropped down and then came back up and broke. So for that moment, I was like, uh-oh, you know, this, this is not looking great. Uh, but it did break that level, uh, which I think I had a higher likelihood of doing because the initial entry was a good entry. It did drop before it came up, but I still had a good quality entry. I didn't buy it high a day, I bought a pullback. It ripped through the highs and I sold. It pulled back, ripped up again, I bought the next pullback. Then did one more, so I had three pullback trades, $1,700. If I can focus on trading less, and trading higher quality setups for the next few days, going into next week, I think that I'm gonna be moving in absolutely the right direction towards rebuilding the account a little bit and regaining some confidence. All right, so it's a nice way to finish the week. It's a lot better than finishing with a seventh red day. And even though, well, I didn't put my watch on this morning. In any case, even though it's only uh, 10 a.m., uh, I'm done. I'm walking away. I'm shutting it down and I'm just going to let it be. If the market rips without me this afternoon, so be it. I'm walking away green. So I'm, I'm going to really take my cue today and walk away early. All right. So I hope you guys enjoy the recap and I'll see you first thing on Monday morning. All right, everyone, so uh, we're gonna do our midday market recap here for Friday, and uh, finally, I'm gonna finish the day green. It has been a, um, not a fun week, um, although the last red streak I had lasted more like three weeks, just because I had three weeks of, you know, a couple times a week having really big losses. And so it'd be like I'd have a really big red day, then a couple small green days, then another really big red day. 
and a couple more green days. So it was like just very um, choppy for the period of like three weeks. This has been six terrible days. Um, and hopefully now I'm going to be on the other side of it and starting to just make my way back into the green. I certainly could have made a lot more money today if I was willing to be more aggressive, but I didn't have the cushion to be aggressive. And so I came in today saying I would focus on uh, pullback setups. And the first one was along on uh, DRAD right here. The break of the pre-market high was... Um, uh, well, the pre-market high was actually 702, and I bought this pullback at um, 75. So I want to show you um, this trade here real quick. Um, this was a very quick trade. I jumped in. Uh, we got a pretty quick break over um, the this level of 75. So let's see. Um, let me just pull up this video for you. All right, so this was my entry here at um, 675. All right, so you can see we've got the pre-market high of seven. This was the first candle to make a new high. So I'm in, and just like that, we get the break and the squeeze up to seven. I take profit of half at 97. We get the breakthrough. I take more profit as it's squeezing through the whole dollar and then taking a little bit out as it's moving higher. So that ended up being a $1,400 winner. It flashed back down, but it came back up. So the first trade, $1,300. The next trade, uh, let's see, it comes back up right about here. And I said this right here, if this breaks over seven, this is gonna be a one minute pullback. So I put my order here for 2,000 shares at seven. I only fill, uh, as you can see, 1,047. I flipped them on the ask and took the profit for the one minute candle to make a new high. It ended up squeezing up into a halt at 740, and I was happy to see it do that, 748 actually, but I took my profit on the, on the way. Now, I didn't wanna be super aggressive on this one just because I knew that there was risk um, that you know the first the first trade was a little risky because I was red for a second and it popped up and I said I, I want to finish the day green so I need to trade with smaller share size had I filled my full 2,000 shares um, that would have been obviously nicer but only got a partial fill and did not want to chase it all right so then it's halted it resumes let's see um, and on the resumption right here we get an open, and my chart's actually not aligned perfectly here. So it pulls back for a second. It hits a high of about 75, it pulls back, and on this pullback, I end up taking another 1,000 share trade. I've got my hand next to the buy button. So I'm long there, looking for the break of $8. A little bit of resistance there, 81 by 90. There it breaks and I end up just selling at 92. Kind of a bad fill, but whatever. Ends up breaking eight and going a little higher. But again, I'm just taking my money on the way. If I leave a little on the table, leave a little on the table. So uh, ended up being uh, a pretty solid, uh, a solid stock, some really nice action in it. If I step back uh, out of this and look at the chart, you can see that it actually just squeezed up to a high of, um, 884. I didn't trade through this breakout. Uh, typically, I probably would have gotten back in here, but again, being in the sort of position of wanting to just rebuild a little bit and have a green day and finish after a, you know, a green trade, I am uh, really content with walking away a little earlier. I know that I left some money on the table and certainly I could have traded with larger share size. However, if I had done that and it had gone the wrong way, this would be my seventh consecutive red day and I wouldn't have been able probably to dig myself out of the hole if I lost three or four grand. Starting with smaller size, if I'd lost 500 or 1,000, I would have had a higher likelihood of being able to dig myself out. So kept the share size, a little more conservative, uh, didn't be as, I, I wasn't as aggressive on uh, the high a day entries. INO, 
we were watching this, but I told myself, you know what? It's a 90 million share float already with 5 million shares of volume pre-market. Let's just focus on what's in your wheelhouse. However, it did a nice one minute pullback here and a second pullback right here. So some nice opportunities on it, but I left it alone. And one of the things that I knew would be challenging today would be the fact that traders were watching many different stocks. Some people were watching INO, some people were watching HTBX, some were still watching APT and AHPI. Others are watching the S&P 500 and TVIX. Some are watching uh, Carnival Cruise Lines. I mean, you've got traders really dispersed among these different um, stocks in the market, CODX, Taylor, I see you traded that one. You also traded OPK. So it just goes to show that um, you know there's traders are, are watching a lot of different stocks right now, and uh, that can make things a little bit tricky. So DRAD, I said, you know what? It's the leading gapper in the entire market. It's up 111%. It fits within my price, float, and volume strategy. I'm going to trade it, and I'm going to try to take as few trades as possible. I took three trades, and I had three winners, and I'll look to do it again on Monday. Right now, obviously leaving money on the table, but um, but not really, because the only way I would have been able to make that extra money would have been able would have been for me to take risk that um, I really shouldn't have been taking today. So I took less risk. I took my profits quickly. I made money, and that's a great day. So, you know, certainly had I been profitable for the last five days, I probably would have been comfortable taking bigger share size and holding longer and maybe even adding into the halt on DRAD. But today I didn't, and that's okay. So, not gonna let it bother. Solid day, we'll be back at it on Monday. All right, you guys. I hope you all have a great weekend and I'll see you on Monday. Hey, did you know every morning I go live to stream my pre-market watch list? Subscribe to the channel, press the alert button, and you'll get the notifications. And if you want to learn more about trading, check out the links in the description. And if you have questions, post them in the comments because I personally respond to every comment posted on my channel.